Fox 7's Justin Doherty is live from court with all the details. And today we had two fathers formally pleading guilty today. They become the sixth and seventh parents in this entire scandal to formally plead guilty. And for the first time, one parent is speaking on camera. Now, if you take a look here at this video, this is one of two fathers formally pleading guilty today, racing out of federal court. This is California Vineyard owner Augustin Hanias. He has admitted to paying $250,000 to have a test proctor cheat on his daughter's SAT and get her into USC as a fake water polo recruit. Now, the second father, former high-powered New York attorney Gordon Kaplan, has also pleaded guilty to cheating on his daughter's college entry exam. He paid $75,000 to have a proctor correct his daughter's ACT answers after she had finished the test. Inside and outside the courtroom today, Kaplan wanted it clear that his daughter had nothing to do with the scheme. I'm deeply ashamed. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I, I'm really sorry to my daughter, who... Uh, I love more than anything in the world, knew nothing about this, hasn't even applied to college yet. But I'm also sorry to all the other kids out there who are in the admissions process, the college admissions process, and to all the parents that are helping them and supporting them. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Uh, two of the scandal's biggest names, actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin, still have hearings remaining. Huffman has pleaded guilty and has a sentencing hearing in September. Loughlin and her husband have pleaded not guilty, and their next hearing is set for early June. Now, as far as punishment for these two fathers who appeared today, Kaplan ha has been recommended that he serve eight months in prison. Now, as far as Hanais, it has been recommended he serve 15 months in prison. Their sentencing hearings are set for October. Live in Boston, Justin Dory, 7 News. New details now surrounding a shooting in Cambridge. Police now arresting two suspects today. That shooting happened in Central Square. No one was hurt at the time. Police say two teenagers were taken into custody. They both face similar charges, including possession of a firearm without a license. Sky 7 HD over some traffic trouble in Saugus today. A car caught on fire here on Route 1 just after noon. As you can see here, this caused a big backup while crews put the fire out, cleared the road. Nobody was hurt. And construction on the Chelsea curve is underway. MassDOT tweeting these photos today. Route 1 northbound and southbound only have two lanes open in each direction during the day. This is all part of the big Tobin Bridge rehabilitation project. Officials say construction could increase travel times for drivers, of course. The project is expected to take two years. A Vermont mother facing charges today following a dangerous drive. Police say 32-year-old Monica Donofrio allegedly ran over another woman with her van. That victim is now in the hospital with some serious injuries. Donofrio is charged with operating a motor vehicle, resulting in some serious injury. A fire breaking out at a home in Salem overnight. It happened on Phillips Street. You can see serious damage done to the house. The window shattered. Apparently the fire started in the kitchen. No word on what sparked the fire. And we're following more news today. For the first time ever, a great white shark has been tracked to a group of islands off the coast of Connecticut. So we have these photographs. They were taken by an organization tracking marine life. They show the group tagging the shark named Cabot. He was spotted Monday morning in Long Island Sound near Connecticut, like we mentioned. Wildlife workers say Cabot has logged 4,000 miles since last October. And Cape officials shifting the focus when it comes to shark attacks. Towns are focusing on swimmer safety and their response to getting help in the event of a shark attack. Tim Caputo explains the safety measures being implemented this summer. We know they're out there. Hundreds of great white sharks lurking in the water off Cape Cod. I see him pop back up, start screaming. Last summer, for the first time in more than 80 years, worst fears were realized when Arthur Medici died after being attacked by one. The 26-year-old was boogie boarding in Wellfleet with friends. So this year, Cape Cod officials are adding new safety measures, but nothing that'll specifically prevent a shark attack. There isn't a solution like people are looking for. There's no one solution that we can implement that's going to make everyone safe from sharks. Instead, the focus is on getting quicker help for anyone who's attacked. I'm at Newcomb Hollow Beach, and I've just seen a surfer get bit by a shark. Cell service is notoriously spotty at beaches on the Outer Cape, so emergency call boxes will be added for an instant connection to 911. Wellfleet is also purchasing an ATV that can navigate the dunes to quickly reach someone who's been bitten by a great white. And many who live on the Cape are being taught how to control life-threatening bleeding until help arrives. Yes, the locals are taking the classes, but I think everyone should kind of be educated on tourniquets and how to be safe in the water. All the changes you'll see this summer here on the Outer Cape have to do with a quicker response time 
after a shark attack happens. As for preventive measures, the ones meant to keep sharks away from people, that won't be decided on until after Labor Day, and it won't be implemented until 2020 at the earliest. I can't put something in the water unless I know something about its effectiveness. One of the ideas they're researching, putting giant nets in the water to give swimmers a protected area in the ocean. It's a technique used in Australia, but there are concerns about the environmental impact and the cost. For now, on the beaches of the Cape, most know the risk, but dive in anyway, not letting an unpredictable predator keep them on the sand. Probably should be a little more worried, <laughs> but I, I just get so caught up in like the moment that it's, I don't really worry that much about it. I definitely will be more cautious this summer. And this week, they'll begin the installation of those emergency call boxes at every single beach from Chatham to Provincetown. On Cape Cod, Tim Caputo, 7 News. Hundreds of healthcare workers and nursing home advocates calling for change. They're rallying at the state house to call for more funding. They say nursing homes are underfunded and are leading to a wave of closures across the country. The Massachusetts Senior Care Association says nearly 70% of residents rely on the state's Medicaid program and the ability to hire and keep workers depends on state funding. We need to make sure that the way that we care for people in skilled nursing facilities is also one of the things that we count as one of the most innovative and valuable things in our state. The industry has warned up to 35 nursing homes could close this year. 20 nursing homes permanently shut their doors last year. A suspect in the terror attack in New Zealand facing more charges. Police have filed terrorism charges against a man accused in that mass shooting. In March, 51 people were killed when a government opened fire inside two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. The 28-year-old suspect was arrested shortly after the attack. He already faces dozens of murder charges and life in prison. Weeks after a shooting at their school, seniors at STEM School Highlands Ranch in Colorado moved forward with graduation on Monday night. They did it without one student who they say sacrificed everything. I know I speak for the class of 2019 when I say that we will never forget what you did for us. So the class of 2019 giving a standing ovation for Kendrick Castillo two weeks after he was killed while defending his classmates from a shooter. The 18-year-old was killed and eight others were injured in that shooting on May 17th or May 7th. They have all been released from the hospital. Two suspects, a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old, are charged in the deadly shooting. A float plane crashed in Alaska Monday, killing two people. It's the second time in a week a Taquan Air float plane has been involved in a deadly crash. Yesterday's crash killed both people on board, a pilot and a passenger. It happened about 20 miles south of last week's crash, where two float planes collided in the midair there. Six people died in that crash. An infant cut from his mother's womb in a gruesome crime is now on the road to recovery. The newborn opening his eyes yesterday at a hospital in Chicago. You can see here he is attached to some two Tubes. He's being held by his father in this photograph. Officials say the infant is in serious condition and is on life support. The mother, the 19-year-old Marlon Ochoa Lopez, was killed last month. Police say she was strangled and her unborn baby was then cut out of her. Lopez was found in the uh, garbage of a woman's home in Chicago. Three suspects have been arrested and charged in the murder. Alabama Public Television has pulled an episode of the PBS children's show, Arthur, off the air because it included a same-sex wedding. Now, the episode aired nationally on May 13th, showing Arthur attending the wedding of his teacher and partner. The Alabama station aired a rerun instead. The station has pre had previously pulled an episode of Arthur in 2005 when a character had two mothers. Also here, the Game of Thrones finale, setting a ratings record at HBO. More than 19 million viewers watched the final episode of that series Sunday night. On the average, each episode of the final season drew more than 44 million viewers when you account for those who see the show after it airs live. A restaurant on the North Shore getting national attention for having the best sandwich. People Magazine named Nick's Famous Roast Beef in Beverly the best sandwich in Massachusetts. The restaurant was recognized for their large beef with cheese and sauce. All right, still ahead here at 4.30, a family of bears trying to go for a ride. The owner of this car talking about that wild sight. And a lot of sunshine today and a lot of wind as well. The sunshine is back tomorrow, but not so much for the wind. We'll have your full forecast coming up. And ahead at 5 o'clock, a toddler is recovering after being hit by a Boston police cruiser in the South End. Now local officials are reacting to this story. That's <laughs> why so receiver Julian Edelman here to stay. The team reportedly finalizing a contract extension. No story, so much more coming up right here on the news station. Yeah.